I'm going to give you a Dutch rudder. Dutch rudder. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can double Dutch rudder, and that way no one gets uh, excluded. T talk me through the process of a Dutch rudder. Do you know what a Dutch rudder is? I can't remember. Right, so... It's Friday from a converted bedroom somewhere in the south of England, only slightly edited and not at all live. They're the cream in your coffee, the double six to your snake eyes, the 22 to your 21, the Reverend Dougal Maguire of board games, the titans of a tabletop. They're really good at, you know, that fishing game where you've got fishing rods. Is it just called the fishing game? The magnets, right? Yeah. That's a good one. It's just the fishing game? Yeah. They've settled Catan, the oh, Sultans of Snakes and Ladders, the Ayatollahs of Agricola, the Betrayers at House on the Hill, the Kings of Tokyo, the Lords of Waterdeep. They are men at work. They put the bang in bang, the champions of the wild, the employers of fun. They always have a ticket to ride. Your favourite podcast, favourite podcast, it's the Everybody Dies podcast. I'm Guy Brash Freakwood, a mighty pirate, and today I'm joined by... Dougal O'Hallahan. <laughs> What's his name? What's the name? The pirate. If you're gonna be, if you're, yeah, I'm just back in the chat. If you're gonna be Guybrush Freakwood. <laughs> oh, cool. And today Brilliant. we are talking about. I've forgotten what we're talking about today. We are talking about which of your hobbies do you think needs a new board game influence adaptation? Uh, okay. Uh, what you guys been playing? I've been um, Warhammers. You've been doing your Warhammer, <laughs> yeah. String sentence. Lit. String sentence. <laughs> Purge. Paint fumes. <laughs> paint pot. Paint pot. Yeah. I've literally just. Been, um, I've got loads of new chaos stuff. So I've been building, converting, and beginning to paint the beginnings of a new Chaos Space Marine army. Okay. So you're looking at trying to get into proper full fat. Warhammer 40,000. Well, I'm already balls deep in <laughs> full fat 40k. Oh, wow, okay. In that I have nearly 6,000 points worth of Iron Warriors. But, I mean, are you looking at getting back into playing the game? or yes. is it Yes, so Andy's, smaller scales. Andy's getting 1,000-ish a, a points of Mordians, like Imperial mm. Guard. Okay. You're thinking of I've got some orcs, Necrons. but I'm... The orcs are always going to be able to be cannon fodder, yeah. but I just, I'm kind of at the point where I've got enough to support a two... Thousand point army or two thousand five hundred point army. I just kind of now we're just starting to do thousand points. Kind of want another army just for fun more than anything else because orcs yeah. are fun, but I want something else. Le I know Leon has gone for Sisters of Battle. Oh, damn. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. I, I think it's just a new lease of life on an army I've collected for a long time. Yeah. Because they had new stuff. And I just, obviously, I bought like the Abaddon model and Made mm -hmm. him into some wolf pirate guy. Which oh, I remember that. Yeah. I really liked, and it was a really fun project. But I looked at doing a whole army like that, and I just sort of, I didn't really want to. It was a, it's a, just wanted a little individual project, and I'm ready to get back into making a full army. Okay. Um, I'm gonna pretty much spam demon engines, and just have gigantic demonic armadillos <laughs> spewing molten lava into tank hatches and stuff like that. That's the idea. Sounds delightful. Demonic armadillos. <laughs> Green skins. That's all I've got. Yeah, I uh I wish I had a demonic armadillo mount. <laughs> what would just like a little dude riding? I it? would ride a demonic armadillo to work. A bit like how they do the juggernauts and stuff like that. Mm. Mm. How long do you reckon it take you to get to work though? I feel like Are cars, they that fast? I feel like cars would move out of the way for me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I too am going back on the Warhammer hype, uh, mainly just painting stuff I've already had um, for maybe like four years, and kind of converting stuff as well. I'm going back to trying to make stuff up a little bit, um, so that's quite good fun. Other than that, I went to so a friend of mine had a birthday party at a are we naming names. Oh, you can do if you want. It's called Board in the City. It's in Southampton. Um, I didn't know how long it's been there. Apparently, it's been there since 2006. 2016. Um, God, man, that would have been ancient. It looks like it used to be a pub and they've converted it out, which is really, really nice. So it's essentially a board game cafe. Um, but yeah, so we, we ended up playing a sort of giant game of Formula D. Um, That's kind of cool. Yeah, it was really, really cool. Uh, the highlights were 
we all agreed that I should stall at the start. Um, and the reason was because I threw the dice so hard it shot off the table and into a pot of milk. <laughs> um, which is incredible even for my standards. Who keeps a pot of milk handy? They, they it's like a tea. They, right, so oh, at this right, point, so everyone yeah. was having tea okay. and like coffee and food. They were just like bringing is out food snacks. Is it bad that you said that you were at like a, a, a board game thing? And I, just thought, I just assumed everyone was drinking milk. Like, <laughs> I, I assumed everyone was drinking big like three pint jugs of beer. No. <laughs> I was just like, that's what I would be doing. No, it was, it was, it was teas, coffee, very British. Teas, coffees, snacks, beverages, all that kind of thing. But yeah, basically, the, I shot it, perfect shot, sunk it straight in the milk, and we were like, well, that's a stall. <laughs> it's got to be. So uh, I didn't come last, but I didn't win either. Um, so that was really good fun. Then we just... I think you should have had to drink the milk to see the result. <laughs> what, like a Magic 8 ball type? Yeah, <laughs> you had to drink yeah. the whole jug of milk. Yeah. Oh, see what the still it anyway. is constantly turning. Just We have to wait for it to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Six hours later. Just swish it around. <laughs> Oh, Although I think what the first dice you roll is either a zero, a one, or a two, isn't it? I think in yeah, it's D. just to see if you stall or pull off. Yeah, <laughs> it would be a really kind of painstaking Boo. kind of. Uh, it's a zero, uh, two, uh, one, two, one, zero. Stall. It would be a bit. Yeah. Um, we had a guy that surprisingly won whilst doing pretty much what I imagine Sean of your group would do and hit hard and knock out fast as fast as possible but still won somehow Yeah, because he just refused to gear down and was rolling the big uh, chunky 30 dice oh, as nice. hard as possible towards the end just like not caring about any of the corners or anything like nah, that no not caring about the corners losing open. as much braking as much engine speed oh as much God. as possible so he could just go yeah I can do it and he did do it and then he, he, he promptly left after that as well he was like I've won I'm going now um yeah, we played some other little games, but I can't remember off the top of my head. We we played like a really similar game to like Cards Against Humanity. Okay. But, um, <clears throat> I guess it's more aimed at children. This one. It was basically I cannot remember the name of it, but essentially you 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 get given a, quite a lengthy brief card, so it's your white card, I guess. And then um, for like the, the black cards, you have to make a story with them. So you pick three of them and then make a story as why you would be a good candidate for that scenario. So it ended up like someone mentioned something about why they were stuck in a cave, how do they get out? And it was essentially they, they had a dragon egg with them which they sat on and hatched and it broke free. They ate some dude. Was like they had a Sherpa with them and it ate them and it was it was just it was crazy stories. So it was much more <clears throat> uh, I guess a bit like Champions of the Wild or like Super Fight where you've got to kind of explain or like you're unemployed, choices. where you're yeah. sort of yeah. Essentially, you were an interview. Yeah, it was really, really good because you didn't have to just go. Yeah, it's this, this, and this. It's funny joke laugh. Whereas this was kind of make this really ridiculous story and um, okay. Yeah, it's quite good fun. Yeah, it sounds interesting. It sounds like it's more like an RPG generator almost, or something like that. Just yeah. Using a deck of cards rather than. I cannot. I, I mean, definitely you do not have it, but I don't know if it's an older one or a new one. The box looked relatively new, but whether it was a. A random one that someone just picked up somewhere. It was only like sure. a sort of, you know, but it was, yeah, it was good fun. It had a little uh, penguin on the front. Okay. That's what I remember. Delightful. Delightful. Um, Yourself. Myself. Yourself. I have played absolutely nothing. Gal. Um, <laughs> the only thing I've played is, uh, I don't know whether it's worth talking about too much, although I do want to bring up a couple of things about it, is I played the solo version of Terror, uh, Terror Below, which I have to say, in terms of board games which are designed as a multiplayer experience that then have a boiled down solo game kind of like within it, uh, it's probably the best one I've played of those. Okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> it's only because most of the time, a lot of these games, when they've got a solo uh, kind of like mode, they do what they can to generate an AI, usually, they're, that they're plays against you. They're never particularly strong, are they? Uh, if anything, I would say the opposite. They're too strong. Because what happens really? is a lot of the time these AIs in games, I definitely found the one the, the one I bring up Yeah, in the video review, I bring up Villagers, where it actually allows the AI to do stuff that you're not allowed to do. So it makes it almost that's, unfair. That's interesting, because the only experiences I've had with a calculated AI have been the AIs kind of stupid. Right. Okay. It's, it's almost like they get a lot of resources, but what they do with them is the act of a maniac. Um, so, like, the one I have played is I played an X-Wing game, which was a trench run, and it's supposed to be a cooperative trench run. Yeah. Okay. So you all have an X-Wing, and then you introduce TIE Fighters, you roll to see TIE Fighters come in, and they 
uh, roll to see who they attack, sort of thing. So one will attack the so one person is like the designated trench runner. So yeah. the idea is they're supposed to hit the target at the end, which means they can't shoot anyone else. They've just got to pilot through. Yeah. And then someone might attack escort ships or stuff like that. You can roll and, and like they kind of just do their own thing. Most of the time, they kind of just go towards the nearest person and attack them. Right. Um, yeah, it's it's almost randomised, but almost not. And yeah. it didn't. It, it works, but in a way that you sort of find yourself going. If you think about this, I could set myself in a position where I could just gun down Tie Fighters for a whole game. Yeah. But um, and then we've also played mm. Imperial Assault, which we found the. We looked at the AI bits of it, didn't we? What we'd figure out what they would do. Oh, what as if you use it on the app. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it, it essentially just takes out the the role of. Well, it's not really a DM, is it? I suppose it's it is a DM. It's sort of a DM, but it's more of a controller for the enemy. Yeah. I think those ones, it sounds like what it is, is it just generates random events. Yeah. And, and then they, they, don't, they her... don't tend to apply any context to those random events. They yeah. tend to just kind of go, eh. And they do well, stuff, and you you sort of react to it, but it they, doesn't They open have... the door, they start shooting. You I, yeah. do it, I right? think it sounds like they run on a similar AI to how Blackstone Fortress works. Yes. In that they give you a number so you, of situational that, that, things. That's another one where right? I don't think the, the AI is great. The AI is particularly strong. But then they both, tend to just move towards you, don't they? Or both, the nearest person. Yeah. The only thing is, both the Imperial Assault and Blackstone Fortress games, they are geared towards running a game that's going to have a team of people playing against them mm. and trying to make them do certain things. I'm more talking about games where it's a solo experience. I know you did mention the X Wing one where the AI was a bit. Yeah, that is clunky, worth noting that as well. That's a fan made. Yeah, thing. it's not, that's fair it's not something that Fantasy Flight have made. It's a, a yeah. fan thing where they've gone. I want to do solo trench runs against um, a constantly regenerating AI. Yeah. There's one Darth Vader, thousands of TIE fighters, and I've got to get to the end. Yeah. It, yeah. Someone's made that because they wanted to play it, and I think it's a really cool idea, and I think we should play it. Yeah. Okay. But, but it was good. It was really good fun. Yeah. I guess to it go, makes more sense of multiplayer. Yeah. Just to go back to Terror Below because <laughs> I want to talk a, a little bit about this because I did such a bad job of explaining it in our video review. Um, the a uh, single player v mode of Terror Below basically sees you ag uh, against, uh, running against time, so you play it exactly the same as you'd usually do. But as soon as a 15th worm has made its attack, that's it, the game's up. Okay. Um, they can also, in the single player mode, they can actually destroy the locations oh, as well. Oh, that's cool. Um, so the one that I remember playing that got very, very close, I lost it, but lost it right at the end, was um, I had to complete a bounty for every single building apart from one so five out of the six places I had to get an egg and deliver it to uh, I managed to get four and then failed on the fifth one okay. uh, one building did get destroyed but I also figured that if two buildings get destroyed then the game's over anyway so yeah. you, you kind of have to move about the board you have to try and distract the worms to keep them away from certain buildings That's cool. which I managed to do just fine just not in the amount of time that I had because one of the other problems with this solo experience is that every single turn uh, worm attacks, so you can't just spread your resources elsewhere. Mm. You have to very carefully think about where you're going to be placing your vehicle cards, because again, you don't want the worms to attack, but every, at the end of every single turn, you roll uh, a dice, first of all, to see which worm attacks, and then you roll a dice to see which worm is forced to have a card put on it. Uh, so, in other words, you can't stall. You have to just yeah. try and rattle through it you have Constant to take chances so as well rush to the end you do have to rush to the end and it's actually really really good it's a lot more fun than playing against an ai character or something yeah. like that it, it's far better there's three different missions that are outlined in the uh manual so you've got three different ways of playing the solo game and the other thing which i completely neglected neglected to talk about at all in the review was the ravine on the other side of the board which actually is really really cool um, I was playing with it when I was playing through the solo games and the idea is that it, it kind of like makes you think about how you want to move across the board more because you can't directly move across the ravine however you can attempt to jump it so, so in, cool. in a situation in the standard game you can jump using other cars yes can you use those other cars as ramps to jump it I don't think so the actual rules say that you can move up to one space to get next to the ravine and then attempt to jump it all in one turn. So 
what you can do is you can either jump one of the narrower gaps where it's only one space that you have to jump. You just all you have to do to do that is discard one vehicle card and then you can jump over it. Your vehicle cards get refreshed at the end of every round anyway, so it's kind of like it doesn't seem like it's that big a deal. But to jump more than one space, if you want to jump, I think there's a three and a four space one. The card you have to discard in order to make the jump has to be either a six or seven. So it has to be a high value card, That's which means you have to think about how you're going to use your cards in your hand, because do you want to use one action that's going to cost you a lot of turns or you might be lucky you might have two six or seven cards in which case hell you can just go for it but if you manage to regardless of whether you successfully make the jump or not you always get a victory point for it the downside is you have to every single time you make the jump so you have to discard a six or seven card and then you have to roll a dice on a one two three you just die um wow. on a four five six uh you make the jump that would so, have made the game we played last Really quick. It would have been. I was throwing it. myself at every worm. Yeah. And yeah, every jump. <laughs> if you'd have kept making that jump, though, my God. <laughs> I would have you won. would have been rolling in the points. I would have like... gone backwards and forwards. Yeah. That's all I would have done. Yeah. But I mean, in, in the solo game that I was doing, I, because it was a race against time, I had to take those chances jumping the ravine and stuff like that, which made it super tense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, really good. I really, really enjoyed it. So, um, this, like I say, it's probably the best solo adaption of a multiplayer game that I think I've played hmm. probably I uh, really really enjoyed it for a game that I failed to recommend because I still stand by that I don't think it's a game for everyone hmm. um, one thing I do want to say right now is as well because we've been struggling to get game nights together all together um, it's not been through lack of trying. It's just been we haven't been able to get the people together. It's Christmas, that's the so problem, yeah. it's Christmas, and people aren't <laughs> so interested in coming along and playing games. Uh, at the moment, for next week's poll, the game that we think we is probably going to win if we don't play it in the next two weeks. I think we're probably going to struggle to do a review on it. In which case, if you're a patron and have <laughs> voted to have that video made, we're probably going to promise a refund for the month uh, if we're unable to do that we'll still have the review done at some point but it just might not be before Christmas it really depends on whether I manage to get people together to actually be able to play it we've played it as a two player game so far um, I won't reveal which game it is that, which is probably going to win it still could change in which case we would have been back to square one anyway but uh, I won't reveal that just yet um, apart from that I think it's time to move on to some news I wanted to put a really funny strap line after you were talking about that game. It's like the most fun you can have playing with yourself, but you then cut into something serious, so I couldn't do it. it you're Sorry, guys. Right <laughs> <laughs> I got it off my chest, though. Okay. Uh, hang on, there's a funny tagline to be had there as well. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's do some news. Let's do some news. Right, okay, so the first thing I have on here, it comes from sciencedaily.com. Uh, playing board games may help protect thinking skills in old age. I think this kind of went without saying anyway. But... Your source for the latest research news. Yes. So this is not the first time I've heard this. No. I got I've... heard it was the dementia thing. It's yeah, supposed so to stay off dementia. Like We've talked about the dementia thing uh... before, but this is actually... <clears throat> to show that it does help. It's kind of the same thing. It's like thing, brain training, isn't it? I think it's keeping the mind cognitively active, active yeah. Yeah. is always going to help. Uh, the summary for this article, which I'll read now, uh, oh, so people, it, it actually does it. specify as well. It kind of says, uh, people who play games such as card games and board games are more likely to stay mentally sharp in later life, a study suggests. Those who re regularly played non-digital games scored better on a memory oh. and thinking <laughs> tests in their 70s, the research found. This comes from the University of Edinburgh, and I, it looks like the research was published on the 26th of November 2019, so very, very recently. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think you could probably have come to this conclusion anyway. Yeah. Uh, it's also worth noting, though, that the concept of dementia terrifies me, so yeah, yeah I'm going to be Playing the board games. <laughs> Thing is, though, I imagine that even if it was, you'd still be able to beat me strategically somehow. Get good. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna Maybe say... I'll just wait. <laughs> just wait it out time and hope. 
I think there's actually only been one or two occasions where you haven't won a game that we've been playing. It's only been really, really recently I've been on something of a, a roll, haven't I? Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, I didn't win Tower Below last time we played yeah. it. I yeah. did win the time before. Yeah. I tend to win at Crocodile. I think Crocodile's different because it's a skill game. It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just... But a lot of these time. games where it's very thinky and stuff like yeah, that. I'm looking at the next. So Tiny to Towns, it. did I win that? You've won a game of it, definitely. Yeah. Judge Dread, we've won, but you've... that was a cooperative thing. Quacks you've of Quedlinburg, you win a lot. I win a lot. Dice Throne, you stick to that same dude, Bison Dude. You win. The oh, Bison yeah, Dude, the, yeah. The, uh, but that's a strategic thing, though. So it's yeah, I like... pick that guy because I know how to play him, and he's kind of OP. I, I, it's more I like his theme. Yeah. Galactic Scoundrels, did you win that? Galactic Scoundrels. Is that I the one? I can't remember. That's kind of like a bit of a random game, anyway, isn't yeah. it? I can't remember. It was, was definitely one of you two won. Which is that the one where you you, you generate I a story think, through card play? I think I won that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you definitely won the other one. The I have won some Dwarven Beer Fest, Is it Zaya? Definitely not all of them. I definitely won Zaya. You won Zaya because you just did the thing where you kept teleporting in and out of. Yeah, yeah. The resource got, that got ridiculous. got ridiculous. I broke the game at that point. I, I think there's. It got it, to the point where I realised I was going to win, and rather than you break, just break the game, I just teleported to you and hunted you. Yeah. I think it was one of those it's cases, wasn't enough. it, that there were two planets that generated very close to one another. Yes. One of them you got the resources, and the second one you could just deliver the resources yeah. to My in a short route. So whoever was closest to it was probably just going to go backwards and forwards. I and... think I did it twice, didn't I? And then thought, yeah. this is a shit way to win the game. Yeah. Where's Daryl? Yeah, and I harpooned him. <laughs> I, I think this was the issue as well. That not only did those planets generate closest to you, but you were also the best arm to be able to deal with any kind of yeah, attack well, or I, anything I like that built, as well. I built my ship to be a bounty hunter, didn't I? Yeah, and yeah. So that I could hunt Daryl when he might eventually broke a crime. What was the? Yeah, because yeah, I did, I took something into yeah, a, and I was a like, I'm going to hunt Daryl, and then ended up in a position where I'm actually. I could win the game through trading if I was being boring. Yeah. What's the game where you have to build an actual ship and you've got like a ship layout and you can choose parts Faster of it? Faster than light. Yeah. Was that the one? Wait, are you talking about a video game? No, no, no. It was, it was a. Oh, I know what you mean. It was a card um, game. It was a board game. We, and we you played have it. To, you got a time limit and you've got to put all the pieces in. Yeah. And you and have to space team. Yeah. No. 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 no, no. no. So. There's like a, a generator and it has oh, to lead to a you had to go oh, around a map. Yeah, I know games. what you mean. Galactic truckers. Yeah, I'm yes. pretty sure you won that as well. Uh, I don't think I did. I think Steve did. I can't remember. I I, you, I don't think you, we didn't play a full game. You out hard, like nothing was connected. But you no, it wasn't that. You had to then collect things, didn't you? You had to go around oh, yeah. picking up items. I think I think I, you I think went I, and got stuff. I don't think I won that. No, but I think also we didn't play the full game. We only played no. the first chapter out of three because we ah, ran okay. out of time. I, I won Dead Man's Cabal, didn't I? Uh, was yeah. me or you? It was one of us. Um, I, like I think you. Me. I think you won. I, I've won a game of, yeah, uh, no. of, so of the game Dead I played, but I don't think I played with you that time. No, it was me, you, me yeah. and Sean, and I won that. Yeah. Mega City Oceana, I won. Yeah. Men at Work, I've won. Yeah, you. I am on something of a winning spree. I think I, I remember I beat you, you at Summoner's Isle. Yeah. I because I, I've still never lost a game of Summoner's Isle. Still. It's worth noting that the trade-off for being lucky at, at board games is, you know. <laughs> this. Like you have to be, you know, like visually mental. Or like... Oh, I think I look like a, a maniac and act like a maniac. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably second that. Actually. Yeah, I've seen you at work. Okay, <laughs> literally. <laughs> so, next item on the agenda is Divinity: Original Sin is getting a board game. Oh. It's a banging video game, which I'd be delighted if someone said that's the only game you can ever play for the rest of your life because I would just hang around the man that goes the. Man with, there's nobody has more friends than a man with many cheeses, and I would listen to that <laughs> quote again and again and again. So, this has been compared to Gloomhaven, yeah. Um, although it says it's a fully replayable legacy game, huh. uh, so in other words, you're not tearing things apart and things That's like cool. that. I, I believe, I like that. however, um, it means that uh, from the setup on the board, you have far less content in it than you do in Gloomhaven. I'm not talking about story content or anything yeah. like that. I'm talking about physical parts and things like that, which is going to appeal to a lot of people because you need a lot of table space for Gloomhaven. This, you only need a smallish kind of table. That's quite cool. There's not a great deal of components. Uh, I think it looks as if it's going to be more of a story-driven thing through card play and things like that, and combat's going to take place through card play. And this is where the kicker comes. It's the same price as Gloomhaven. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. It's going to be going on to Kickstarter at uh, £120. Wow. Okay. Which if, is... If you'd said 80 Yeah. 
I would I, be on Kickstarter on my phone at the moment. I mean, I will argue that that's a, it, this that's a lot. It, this game is going to be for fans of Divinity Original Sin and for people that have already played the hell out of Gloomhaven and done everything in it, which I think is pretty much nobody. Mm. Um, I kind of feel like a lot of people that already own Gloomhaven are going to look at this and just go, I've already spent £120 on a game that's yeah. given me a hell of a lot more boxed content. And... You know, that, that's a huge shame because I'm a massive fan of Divinity. Yes. And I would buy that, but not, I can't justify that price. I will say the um, it still looks like a fantastic game. It looks really, really good. It looks really comp competently made. Uh, the story generation looks really, really good on it. Because mm. uh, uh, they've got a video on their uh, trailer for the board game, and it's great. I would suggest you go and watch it. The We're, we're actually reading this story off of Polygon.com. Uh, I would recommend you go over to Polygon and you check out the video yourself. I'm going to put links in, in the description at the end. So... The dev, um, the dev team for Divinity has always had a very good sense of humour. Yeah. So I imagine it's not going to be as... Is it by them or is it... It is actually by them yeah, as well. Okay. So uh, they've mentioned... Uh, is it? Do you say it? Linveda Studios and Larian Studios? So Larian Studios, Larian made, Studios it, made Divinity, didn't they? And so. Linvanda, I think, are helping to adapt it into a board game. Yeah. Uh, so they are working together on it. Um, I will say the trailer does... In Involve a scene where the main villain of the piece throws someone from the top of a tower and their solution to it as a party was to turn him as he's falling to the ground to his death to turn him into a chicken <laughs> that, that is 100% the most divinity thing yeah. I, I do it all the time yeah. my character is a, like a, a spell trickster and I constantly turn Re into a chicken or yeah. Jordan into a chicken or Sean into a chicken sometimes Andy into a chicken <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's like the best bit of the game is going up to a big boss and the boss is like, and you're a chicken. <laughs> but yeah. I have never played this game. Oh. Or number two. How? I have the first one, but I never got very far into it. it. Just, okay, well, you're playing this with me at some point. It just didn't seem like, I don't know, everyone talks Turning about it. It just didn't boy. seem very... It's great. It's great fun. What would you compare it to, game-wise? So think... it's like a... It's a free-roaming game for the most part and when you go into the combat it's turn based so it's quite difficult it's grid based to play. isn't it so no, it's, it's, not, it's not grid based oh is it not no. oh okay it's um, like it's like it calculates how far you can walk and your shooting distance and things like that yeah. so but it's not on a grid but okay. you're, you're, you're free roaming for the majority of it until yeah, you get so into the, the actual game itself so you can walk around town world. yeah and a man with many cheeses yes yeah, open world and then the moment you hit combat it all hits turn based based on people's initiative it's kind of a bit like the old Knights of the Old Public then in a way it's more like an isometric RPG, isn't it? So yeah. it's a bit more like Baldur's Gate, Icewind yeah. Dale, things like that, except yeah. it's a big open world. I know, what you, I know what you mean. Like, as in you're walking around, but then when you get into combat... It's... I know what you mean by the Star Wars yeah. comparison. It's very it's similar to that as well. Um, I might like it then. Oh, it's, it's really, really good fun. Is it on it's very funny. new gen stuff, or is it on older stuff? Uh, you can get it on PS4. That's cool. Yeah, and you can get it, I play it on PC, mostly. But I've got it on PS... I've got it on two... Wow, format okay. so that I can play it with as many people as possible because I enjoy it that much. All right. <laughs> I, will, so, I will look into it. But it's all about that chicken build. Okay. So from <laughs> one video game adaption to another, we talk about a hell of a lot of these on the podcast. Uh, Sniper Elite is also being made into That's a board game. There's not very many details on this. Um, uh, Rebellion kind of made a studio recently called Rebellion Unplugged, where it looks like they're actually starting to create board games based on their video game licenses. Okay. And it looks like Sniper Elite is going to be the next one on there. I have no I idea how this is going to work. going to work. And there are, at the moment, there's very few details about it. I'm Slow motion this. nut shots. So this story is coming <laughs> off of PCGamer.com. Well, That's you're never going to... Yeah, there's no way they're going to be able to recreate that as a... The whole X-ray, the whole X-ray, like, as you kill, like, a Nazi or something like that, is so cool. Because you watch the bullet penetrate through it, like, rips apart part of... Um... Have you ever played it? Yeah, it's just the the glee in which you're saying this is a little bit. No, because it's that's the part of it that's really really cool because you you get to watch the damage <laughs> it's doing. You get to watch the the bullet enter the nutsack. <laughs> no, I don't I don't shoot people in the balls. I that's shoot them not using true. The liver. You 100% shoot people in the balls. I shot someone twice in the balls. 
the same most... guy. That's not cool. <laughs> That's the same guy. This is turning into a South Park episode. Yeah. <laughs> you don't shoot someone in it, man. <laughs> no, I just I love the whole that slow motion bullet travel system is really, really cool. And then the yeah. X-ray body where you see like how much damage it does, or like if a shrapnel grenade goes off and it like splits them apart. I love that kind of stuff. This you, is you can see the damage. Whereas this will be the first thing they play in the court case. <laughs> Where after you've killed no, like six or seven people I'm just saying. I just wanted to watch what kind of damage it would do <laughs> you psychopath so what I, what I can tell you although there's not very many details available right now about how the game's going to play uh, it is going to be available to play at PAX at, uh, over the 6th to the 8th of December so if you're going to that, this game's probably going to be available to try. So they haven't really released very many details. I, I'm guessing they're saving it for packs. The only thing they have used to describe it is, I think they said it's going to be a stealth action game. So the, the fun with the game is you're like you're trying to find vantage points. You're trying to make noises so like it hides your. I, your I can't shots, see like... how they're going to do that without an enormous map. No, yeah, it is a the well the or the, without it being like a reaction based card game, in which case you lose a lot of the charm. I mean, it's very I strange. I, I you could have game. a you could have a hidden movement game. However, Imagine I don't know many... how that would work if all the people are playing it as yeah. a hidden movement game. Imagine that would how be many kind of strange. You'd need on a table to play that properly. So, I mean, yeah, this is going to be interesting to say the least. Whether it's going to be any good or not is uh, another question, but. How they actually manage to implement this, unless it is a one versus all, and only one person is playing as the sniper. Maybe. What, and they're hidden from? Yeah, I uh, I don't know. But then, but then it doesn't. It's not really an action game, is it? If, no. If if it's just a hidden movement thing of loads of people looking for a sniper whilst the sniper's trying to pick people off. It just the, the the fun sometimes is when you do get caught and you have to just swap to like a MP40 or whatever and just go mad. Yeah. I don't know. Well, well I'm interested to see how it develops. Yeah. But. I can't figure out how it's going to work in a minute. Yeah. Okay, uh, this one I wanted to get your, your guys' take on. Uh, new Mission Hill Bar will feature board games with sound effects. So the way they're describing this is uh, when you play Monopoly, you pass go and collect $200. In our experience, you would pass go, collect $200, and you'll hear the sound of money rolling into your bank <laughs> account. So that's the example they've given there. Like this... more immersion. Yeah, so they're quite kind of trying to push this as this is their. A, it's a novelty, isn't it? It is a novelty. Um, I think that I think that's funny or interesting for all of thirty seconds. Yeah, and it also feels like something you could quite easily recreate at home. So this is like the QI game, which my in-laws have. Yeah, where they have that clacks and buzzer thing. Yeah, which after three goes, we're like, let's not press that button anymore. Yeah, because it's really irritating. We see it a lot. Obviously, where we work, we have board games coming in which oh, have these God. stupid sound effect things. Like ah, the one, which, yep, yeah, that's the one which I'm immediately thinking of. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> that <laughs> wait, <what? laughs> doesn't do anything. It's not a noise, but it's a <laughs> <laughs> that new slap ninja one. That's Why is all... it me? <laughs> get me! Get me! Ah! That's all I hear now. Like uh... I'm a silly sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Play with me! Oh, it just so upsets me. Yeah. Yeah. And then you always get the people that wander past are pressing the button and thinking, why is that person not laughing? Because mm. I've heard it for about the 75th time today. Yeah, you're the 100th <laughs> person. Here's your reward. Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that silly sausage can be used to torture people just on repeat. Just the noise in the background. Do you mean though. physically? Or... No, no, no. Just, just <laughs> audio, mentally. Just, audio, just, yeah. audio. The audio mentally in the background. <laughs> just just start... beating him around the desk. Dip me, dip me, dip me. Ah! Uh, what did he hear before he died? Oh, um, just the police find him, just a sausage. <laughs> 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 okay, so the only thing I'll say about that is people do this anyway with their phones. Like we've done it before with X Wing. You put on like soundtracks. I do like, this, yeah. So when we're like, playing Warhammer or stuff like that, Legion and stuff, yeah. I put on battle music in the background because it gives me a little bit of. I know joy. it's not sound effects, but it's music. It's whereas like, ambiance. We were playing Crocodile, and I was putting on like Asian war drums and <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. It worked. <laughs> Okay. Were, when when you and Andy were playing tanks as well, I was trying to find appropriate music to play during yeah, that, yeah. and the best I could come up with was the steel drum music from Commando, which worked. <laughs> yeah, so which yeah, worked. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Yeah. This is the thing. Like, I, I, that kind of stuff isn't boring or won't get tiring because it's, I think it, it's it's it's, ba it's background music. It's yeah. Not, it's not actively part of the game. Yeah. And when it becomes actively part of the game, it becomes part of what you have to do turn by turn or action by action. 
and if it's a tedious sound that's going to get repetitive, then mm. people are going to get annoyed. Having gunshots in the background, g- generic, going off and... <laughs> yeah, it just sets the scene. Rat-a-tat-a-tat going yeah. on in the background whilst we play at a low enough volume <laughs> that you can ignore it if you want to. Mm. Yeah, it sort of builds atmosphere for games like that. But yeah, yeah, having like a buzzer, I find really, 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 really annoying. So, oh, that yeah. new that new monopoly with like a fake Amazon Alexa. You seen that? No, I haven't oh, seen people that. People keep pressing it. Oh, you passed go. Uh-huh. Say pass go. No, they, so no, I don't want to. So no, annoying. I'd rather pass altogether and do something else. <laughs> yeah, Have you, there is a new monopoly game coming out actually. And that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> and it's like called the longest ever board game edition, something like that. Oh my god! No, it's long enough as it is. Yeah, apparently it's supposed to last just forever. <laughs> I've no, I didn't read the article. What, I read is, the headline. It's a legacy of, one. <laughs> I read the headline and thought, I not. I, when you've had enough <laughs> of this game, burn the board game. Yeah. <laughs> Get rid of it. Five minutes later, just, I just desperately got, just. I got this to... image of us lot just wiping monopolies off a shelf into a bin <laughs> at, at work and just throwing a match in it. <laughs> We've had enough of this game now. We'll just have a sign up saying "You're welcome." Please donate. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> Like some sort of uh, eco terrorist type thing. <laughs> uh, go, go. Right, okay. Uh, the makers of Pokemon Go are adapting oh. Catan into an AR game. Hmm. So, interesting. This is all from the Evening Standard. Uh, so, <laughs> That's cool, actually. Niantic's next augmented reality univo- univoice, univoice, <laughs> univoice has been revealed and your, is going to be Your based- Steve is malfunctioning. <laughs> <You're> please <laughs> reboot. <laughs> It's going to be based on the hit board game, Catan. If you've never played it before, the game sees players act as settlers on the remote island of Catan, where they compete for the best resources in order to build roads and villages. First published in 2015, it's one of the most beloved board games of all time, and has spawned many spin-offs, including Catan Starfarers and Catan Seafarers. Okay, so it kind of looks like this is just going to become a massive worldwide game of Catan. I, I'd play that. Yeah, I this, would say that would be kind of cool. This looks kind of awesome. So I like the idea of people trading with one another. Yeah. Making, uh, like, let's say that everyone in the town that they lived in contributed to it. And then you started having competing towns, things like that. So everyone's trading resources to try and get the best out of their thing. Or even like smaller regions within towns and things like that. This kind of could be something really, really cool. Yeah, I mean, I was surprised to see people still playing Pokemon Go. No, 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 no. I've just started in, in quite a. You, I know you do, but I, when we went to Southampton the other day. There were still people at a corner, all collectively, and you can tell because they've got power bank adapters coming yeah. out of their phones. So you I, just, you just know. I no is, longer play that game actively. But it's it's crazy it's just how every much... so often you bring it out, don't you, and just collect Pokemon or something. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's nice to see maybe if it would make another community kind of thing I think that's quite a good thing yeah hmm. at least yeah. people are getting because I, I guarantee those people that were on that corner didn't know each other up until that point yeah. kind of thing. they're probably like, on the same Pokemon like, community page yeah, yeah. so it's, it's nice because you get like I think we joined the ball one didn't we I, I did until I got so sick of the notifications yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the other thing about this is I think that if this gets popular it's yet another gateway into board gaming yeah. for more people it's going to expand the Appeal people are going to be interested into what Catan they might want to play is, the original and see how it goes, and, and then start getting yeah. into board gaming, and then realise there's like themed ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I'm interested. Yeah. Okay. The last news story we've got, which pretty much is just summed up by the title itself, uh, we're returning to JapanTimes.co.jp, which I didn't think we'd ever do after the last one. Hey, look, come uh, on. They've got more to give. Japanese company makes board game of pure gold. Huh. So. The board game itself is actually the Jinsei game, or the game of life. Uh, it uses 12.4 kilograms of pure gold and weighs over six, 17 kilograms. Yeah, but look at the price. Yep, it is not for sale, the company said. And it's been valued at 150 million yen, which by yen like standards is probably like... 150 what? million pounds in post-Brexit money. Yeah, probably something like that. But yeah. <laughs> so is it, it's, it's just a <laughs> it's just a like display thing then for them I think it's just a display thing yeah it's not something that they're planning on selling oh, uh, producing it's just a one off thing that's crazy just done for the hell of it really fair enough 
Yeah. One of these days we'll get a gold snakes and ladders. Oh, God. Okay. Let's move Pretty on. Pretty sure there's already a Monopoly Gold edition. Oh, probably. Yeah, but it's probably made of fake gold, just sprayed with <laughs> like, gold like, paint. So, I like my gold 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pure gold. 24 carat. There's some good gold. If I'm going to bite it, I want it to actually... Crack your teeth like, and like, yeah. destroy your jawline. Isn't the idea that good gold is meant to be malleable and soft? Oh, Hello. Yeah. When you bite pure gold, or not pure gold, but when you bite a gold coin, it leaves no dent. Oh, when, it leaves no dent? When you bite, well, yeah, because you're supposed to spoil the coin. Okay. When you bite a gold coin and it leaves a dent, it's because it's been mixed in with lead. With, right. Which okay. is a way of cheapening the making of fake coins. So you mix a little bit of gold with the lead, and the idea is that the fake coin looks and feels Probably like weighs it, the same weighs well, similar. Yeah. Right. And when you bite it, lead is malleable to touch. That's why people bite coins in like You bite the coin, stuff. if you leave a bite, it means it's fake, and it's been sort of put in with lead. Oh, interesting. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. <laughs> Should we move on to making a game? No, no, no. No? no? Why do you know that? Where, okay. have you, where have you found that from? This is one of those many things. This isn't when you were talking about making forgery uh, coins, was it, for... Um... No, I, I gave up on making forged coins for that because I figured I could actually tank an economy of which people enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's such a dick move. And like, I wanted to make fake coins for that in a way that fake. was so fake that they had like so all the um, coins in LARP have virtues on, so it's like loyalty and prosperity and stuff like that. I want one that just says like vengeance, <laughs> <laughs> or lust, <laughs> and and pay in those and see if anyone notices, but. I imagine people wouldn't check the coins that quickly. Oh, I don't know. Like I imagine I think, you just take I think the you're coins. grossly underestimating the sort of people that go to LARP. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. I imagine it at the end of the I night. Think when if you paid in up. a bunch of coins, as long as they're the same size, no one's looking for them individually. That's what I'm saying. Like if you're mixing in, with, so yeah. you're, you're basically I, laundering money. Uh, yeah, it. I basically wanted fake coins that had false virtues on, but they were they were so. I wanted them to be real enough that they could pass, but fake enough that it'd be obvious if you looked at it. But I, th I think realist. I didn't even ask PD for permission in the end because I just thought it's they're going to say no because the problem is though I know they would say no because obviously it does actually you it could probably get away with it. Economy, but at the yeah. same time, it'd be such a cool concept because it'd be cool like concept, there's this counterfeit yeah. group going round. Yeah. They're laundering money through like the, either the, the the local pubs or whatever, and it's a really cool story. Yeah, and it drums up this whole thing like people have got to try and find where well, they're. I, I kind of wanted to print all these fake coins, collect Sean's player pack. Take his real coins out, <laughs> fill what it with patsy. fake coins, <laughs> and then make Sean be the accidental distributor of false currency because yeah. he wouldn't know because he's. Yeah. But that would make for a cool story. <laughs> it though. would be a really good cool story. Sean, everything Sean getting... would get arrested and executed for giving out <laughs> coins with vengeance and lust on because, one, he's preaching a false virtue, two, he's minting his own currency. Like, I just want to see him executed in front of the Inquisition. I mean, wouldn't That'd that be, be good hilarious. if then these coins are still... <laughs> <laughs> yes, but... Let's do it. <laughs> uh, I don't want to pay for all these fake coins and it upset people. No, we'll just make Because right. if it ruins other people's game, then... At the but same it time, it, sort of... it shouldn't do. No, it, it's it leading be. into another story. These people should know it's a role-playing game and should yeah. it should be noted that I feel like the sort of people that's that are that invested in currency in the game are the sort of people where they get salty and report it. But at the same time, those people should be able to realise that this is a story-driven thing and a character is messing with it. Okay, so the other problem is my character... It does make a really cool it story. Does it does not does. suit my character currently right, to be okay. making false currency. He's not that kind of guy. So it, That's it, a shame. But... It, and to be fair, I would be benefiting directly off of making stuff in real life money. It, it just, yeah, it is a little bit controversial. Yes. I kind of want to make some out of plastic. Yeah. That's the thing, it's so a it's cool really concept. obvious, so they actually weigh differently and people go, well that's not right, what, the f what is this? Yeah. But, oh, yeah. It's... I guess that would be better if you were to 3D print them or get them made of plastic because then at least you could go, look, it's a part of a character arc it's, I'm it's, going It's with. a joke. Not even a joke. Uh, like that, at that point, a... though, people, there's hardly any people that pick up that coin and go, "I'm taking this." But yeah, pick up the. But it... what I kind of really wanted to do is make a bunch of these fake coins and just litter them on the ground. Yeah. And see if people pick them up and try and spend them. Yeah. Mm. And then just in that way, I'm not benefiting directly from introducing fake currency into life. But there's I'm a cool just... story yeah. developing because someone has been scattering around yeah. fake. But icy the coins. idea that it's got fake virtues on as well is actually going to play into it. 
further as a story thing. Yeah. It's not just about currency anymore. Oh my God, it's like about a, religion. Yeah, yeah, like a, like a <laughs> cult trying to spread like chaos. Yeah. yeah. Which is a really cool. Co- this is the thing. That there's some really cool concepts out there, but I just I, I get what you mean. It, it would disrupt the the legit flow. I don't. Of it, in a way. I don't mind disrupting the game somewhat if it means it's going to create game in a, in a fantastic way. story. Yeah. Fantastic story. But I don't want to upset PD by introducing fake currency into their system. Sure. When it might upset them, because I feel like it would. In the same way that if I decided to cast in resin my own ingots of, you know, fake. Um, or a calcum or steel or whatever and yeah. introduce that into the game system that would break the economy because I'd have all the yeah. money yeah exactly but I mean it, it's kind of like every element of the game should be open <clears throat> to being disrupted as such yeah, okay. because it creates narrative mm. and I don't know it, it gives some people that maybe put it this way good stories always come from adversity and things like that so if these people that are really concerned about the economy and something like that, suddenly they've got a problem to deal with. Yeah, I, 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 I really like it as an idea, but I haven't run it past PD yet because I've not thought of a character that works for Yeah, me. Yeah, that's fair enough. It, it doesn't make sense for you to... It, you have to have the character that would be looking to work it. Work I also it don't time. imagine the my lord character no, no. being my, able my, to do my, it. My next character <laughs> wouldn't be doing it either. So, my turnips, um, my lord, and also the I fake think, coins, my lord. At one point, I want to play a pirate. A brass coat would work really well with that. And that makes sense for that character to yeah. be doing stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, Mending definitely. False coins. Maybe anyway, run, maybe run it past shall, them, like a pre yeah. Shall we go, 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 go. move on? Yes. Shall we make a game? Yes. Okay. Is it about making fake gold and pirating it through? Because I think we've just made a really good concept there. Let's see if we can get there. Choose a number between one, two, and three. Eight. Three. Okay. It looks a bit like a three. three. We're going with three. <laughs> uh, let me. <laughs> you pick the next one, apparently. So let me tell you what you could have won. Uh, um, oh, I hate you. Our number one, which we could have been making today, was Irresistible Makeover Basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, which may well be my favourite one, is Remote Juggalo Apocalypse. <laughs> well, I guess it's the clown posse. What? Yep, yep. <laughs> and number three, oh, which God. we have chosen to Juggalos. make a game of, is Ingenious Sniper Football. Oh. So. Uh, I feel like this is a dexterity game. A dexterity game. And you play as David Deckham. <laughs> or Ristiano Cronaldo. Right. Oh, that sounds that sounds dodgy, Ristiano. Oh. Oh. But the idea is it's like Sabutio, but you've got to score ridiculous angle free kicks. And you have to put obstacles in the way and you have to bet how many obstacles that you can get this ball past and into the net. So where does the sniper come in? You're sniping the shot. Yeah. Okay. See, I like the idea of you're actually trying to snipe football players on a pitch. I think this is it. Like, I, I was, <laughs> I was genuinely I like, yeah. thinking more along the lines of you can either win through legitimate means of scoring <laughs> this, goals or be the last team standing. So <laughs> Blood Bowl, assassination. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except you don't control... You, let's say there's a third <laughs> The game player plays and out in its own <laughs> way. You have no <laughs> control <laughs> other than annihilating people with a sniper rifle. <laughs> the sniper... <laughs> the sniper is meant to be ingenious as well. So you're... Finding clever ways of sniping people, but like, but like behind your head, like trick shot. Or... <laughs> yeah, like, I, don't, I don't know. You spin, I don't know how you, spin a, you spin a wheel, like a you know, like a thingy, like red, whatever, and it just it decides on the uh, the object that you've got to hide in to snipe. This becomes like a hitman game at this point. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It just, just, it ha- it's happening during a normal game. Fish mascot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bang. <laughs> so, just to clarify, I've. I, I, I don't know whether you, you heard from last week where I found a random game name gen- yes, generator. Yes, I did see this, yeah. These have all come from the random game name gen- I generators. I figured as much, yes. Yeah, so, yep, this is what we're... Are we shooting the football or are we shooting the footballers? Because I like the idea that you're just disrupting do... football play. You're just disrupting the game. By shooting the football. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just going mad at you. Oh, can you do things like get the sniper to shoot out one of the managers or something like that? So for, for a turn, the, the players just... 
can't do whatever the hell they want. They're just kind of they, like, clueless. They, they, they see the managers down, they remain stationary. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, just like real football. <laughs> okay, so it could be like you were saying about like the game plays itself, but you're just disrupting it with a sniper. You have to it. find clever ways. Tell you what, with, with you've the... got a bet on the scoreline, and you have to intervene in the game in a manner that would... Is there multiple snipers? Yeah. So like each player is yes. a different sniper? each player is a different sniper. Each player has been given a scoreline, and they have to interrupt the game in the way that creates that scoreline. So for parts of the game, people will be like, right, well, I need this team to score. So they're all working for that team to score. And when that scores with like two goals, and then the other players are like, right, well, I need the other team to now score two goals as well. And then, but that other, there's some people that need them to score three goals, so they're then. So you can, if there's a sniper that you can cleverly use to try yeah. and fix the score, somehow, hence why it's an ingenious sniper. Yeah. Oh my god, it'd be like. Um... But, and the sniper can be an embittered footballer that got caught fixing that. He's Bruce Grobbler. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and so... Sam Soji. Yeah, 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 definitely. I'm pretty sure it's Sam Soji who got sent I off. I think so, it? yeah. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, like in Metal Gear um, Phantom Pain? You control quiet and make her go to different points. Right. Yeah. I like the idea. You know when the managers are doing this, <laughs> <laughs> you're literally just going, "Yes, uh, go to grid left uh, five or something like that," and then basically she goes along, and then just does it. I, I really like the idea. That's it. Your manager of the opposite team controlling the sniper. I like, I like the, sniper. The, idea, the, the sniper move. You can only use once per game, so you're you're interfering with the game, but that one sniper shot you get to interfere the game. So it could be 90th minute penalty. Oh, no, you shoot the saw... goalkeeper in the head. They <laughs> <laughs> just slot it faster. I feel, like, I feel like it should be dice mechanics or some sort of chance on it with like wind. I love like, like the Raph's not even stopping the game. He's yeah. just like, blows the whistle, the, there's a gun Bang. shot. <laughs> the goalkeeper goes down and he's just like, play on, play on. Play on. <laughs> Yeah, I love the idea of it. Imagine missing that penalty, though. <laughs> <laughs> that should still be a mechanic yeah. as well. You still actually have to score it. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, uh, I, I, yeah. As per standard procedure with this, I would like to play this game. Yeah. Where, when is it out? <laughs> <laughs> we have to develop it a bit first. I like the idea that someone could have saved their sniper as well. Like both of them have saved their sniper use. One of them takes out the goalkeeper, and the other one, the other one shoots the ball. And it just flops to the ground. Well, like, yeah, someone, Draw. someone kills the penalty taker, and someone kills the goalkeeper, and the ball sits there, and the game just ticks on until the time runs out. <laughs> so the ball just sits stationary until everyone just gives up and goes home. Oh my god! Oh my god! This is amazing. We need to make this game. Yeah. Oh, it's the only football game I'd ever play. <laughs> cool. If you have any ideas at all and would like to get rid of this random generator of names, you can do so. <laughs> I, I would fully judge anyone that wants to get rid of this generator of names. Yeah. But uh, makeover basketball, what was it? Irresistible makeover <laughs> basketball. <laughs> which I would have loved that to have That sounds made. inherently Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I've got it's to... the game of ba a baseball, basketball getting remade, or other players just getting makeovers in between the games. I, assumed... I kind of feel like we need to say, maybe not do this and hope that. Hey, getting back to where I was saying, if you would like to suggest <laughs> irresistible makeover <laughs> basketball for us to make, oh, you can yeah. do by writing to us <laughs> at mailbag at everybodydice.com. I just like the, the idea they be their own waifu basketball. <laughs> 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 We need to save this. They use it like a body filler. No, no. <laughs> we need these people that are oh, watching this to make us want to do this. this. <laughs> they, they kiss the basketball's blow up hole. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. I've forgotten what. Oh, know, audience no. questions. That's what we've got next. Oh, nice. Okay. The format is ruined. <laughs> so, this week, uh, we have been asked, if you were making a board game themed menu, what would be on it? That's from Juliana Jenkins. See, the problem is with this, this is kind of easy, because we've been just... to places where they Fry do, burrito. They do yeah. food related... Well, but as, as, as a food, like I actually wasn't... making burritos. I was only hard listening. Moment. What was... <laughs> She asked, so if you're making a board game themed restaurant, is yeah, this a, a restaurant on? with board games that you can play, or is this a restaurant the food, where the, the food, food is I, I think we're talking games. about like, f 
food that's based around board games. Okay, so throw, like. throw, throw burrito. So it's just a burrito that you Dwarven, have to eat by having someone throw it at you. Dwarf and beer fest. Be on the I'm menu. A, anything with diced meat. Yeah, I that's, imagine. That's a good shout. The so, dice thrown patty or something like that. Yeah. Right? Um, the thing is, are you name it after? Are you trying to make puns out of the stuff? Or you just I name mean, it after the, the, the dice think... one is a good pun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm also thinking to that episode of The Simpsons when Homer Simpson just smeared some peanut butter on a playing card, and that was Bart Simpson's lunch. Oh, yeah. I feel like that would that would be a good thing to have on the menu, just Homer's lunchbox, and and it's just Cards you just get a playing like card peanut with peanut butter smeared <laughs> on it. <laughs> um, um, I'm looking at the games now. Let's come to that. Yeah, I um, you've definitely like I said, diced stuff. What what would make it like gingerbread meatballs? Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Themed like themed parts, like I'd have um, like dice shaped food as well. Yeah, <laughs> it's literally just a dice bit of meat with just little things put on it. Yeah, to well, that, it's it, it. You get like a, a bit of metal and you heat up and you sear. Yeah, that could be a little yeah. thing with your logo written into the dice as well. So like it's all yeah on top of burgers and stuff. Yeah. Okay, so that would be the Everybody easy... Dice logo branded onto meat. I mean, it's already branded onto my buttocks. <laughs> that, that is meaty. So, so that Steve can claim that I'm his cattle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if any other farmer tries to claim me, he knows. I'd... Oh, this one's taken. <laughs> this is one of Steve's. <laughs> Slap me on the behind. I'm like, woo! I'm off. Uh, I can't think of I've it. lost track of what we're talking about again. <laughs> Oh, yeah, We're meat. trying to think of foods made I... of board <coughs> gaming pieces, really. I would do like a King of Tokyo burger or the King of New York burger, but it would be like one of those ridiculous stack em ones. Right, okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, so the... like Flam Rouge has opportunity for something spicy. Mm. Uh, yeah. A Flam Rouge chilli, maybe, or something yeah. like that? Actually, no, because it's French, isn't it? So it'd have to be something kind of like... <laughs> the the wingspan, which is just a big pile of wings. Yeah, yes. and you yeah. have to decide whether you hate wingspan enough to avoid <laughs> or it, yeah. or whether you love wings enough to eat it. <laughs> oh, the kids' menu would either be Munchkin's menu or oh, Tiny yeah. Towns menu. Yeah, yeah, like the Tiny Towns dippers or something like that, or Tiny Towns whatever. Yeah, it's like. I realise this is probably a really poor segment of the podcast. Yeah. We're just. Thinking. In between. thinking, like, it's, I mean, it's painful enough being in a room with us three thinking. Let alone, it's been a while since we've all been in the same room thinking. We've all been. It has. It's been a long time. Yeah, we've all been kind so, of. I visited you two at work on Tuesday. We were technically all in the same room. We were. Yeah. I don't really count that. As I a room, wasn't though. thinking though. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't count it as a room. This is an intimate space. It's my private space. I wish uh, it were just that little bit more intimate. Oh well. <laughs> Get your wish. <laughs> Man, yeah. Um, Taking my clothes off. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, this is a real struggle, to be oh, honest with you. Oh, what about like, uh, like an ab- abomination ribs or something like that? At this point, we're just putting words in front of food, and it's, it's, it's no pun. <laughs> You're just like, oh, what about underwater city soup? <laughs> <laughs> just, ah, of fish. just fish soup. <laughs> what about memoir 44 fries? <laughs> <laughs> They're all straight in the line. Um, oh, God. Uh, I do like okay. So other than the name puns, I think which would work really well because that just works anyway. Because we've like there's a couple of places we eat from and they, they've all got yeah. the same like kind of punny names and stuff. But I do think the the concept would be really fun to start putting, like you say, like meeple shaped foods, like chicken yeah. nugget meeples or whatever, and and um, little monopoly houses. I know you don't like them, but do you know what I mean? Like little things like that. I guess so. Um, Scrabbled eggs. Hey, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. I finally got one. Yes. <laughs> and it's- Oh my just god! Alphabet is spaghetti mixed in with scrabble. <laughs> oh my no, god! Like a with scrambled eggs. Like a what do you call it? Like a toasted sandwich, but each one is lettered. Yeah. Like from scrabble, and yeah. like with a little points number. Again, we're using some sort of metal burning thing to make. Yeah. Well, like, there's a lot of searing going on. We're we're mainly predominantly uh, mm. a charcoal grill place. Or oh, how about uh, our world famous decrypto steaks? It's the steak of an animal, we just don't know what. You yes. have to work it out. Escape for a series of Escape points. flam. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so that's done. Uh, oh my god. Right, I, I feel like we've exhausted this. 
Yeah. You guys carry on. The I reckon I got as one more. Effectively as it was meant to be. I, I don't think. I don't think we answered it effectively, but if we you gave. Make a board game I reckon I've got one more honest. pun in me. If you guys want to carry on, I can have a sit and I'm gonna have a think. Okay. Shall we? Do we move on to the big topic and just let yeah, Ian just, just chime in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, okay. I've There's not even characters in the games, like because they're all like. There's no specific characters you can go, oh, this is the blah, blah, blah. You need iconic things yeah. in board gaming in order to make Which things really... out of. Like, you, you wouldn't be able to make food based on games that not many people would be aware of, like something based on Team 3 or something like that, you know? Mm. Um, or something to do with Innis, because people no one, just yeah. wouldn't get no it. It would be that. the big kind of like gateway titles would be what you would be looking to. But again, there's no dominant characters in a lot of these games there's no like particular person that you'd go oh that guy with the beard it's things like meeples and dice yeah. and tokens I suppose mm. um, oh those little potatoes you know like the sauté potato things, a little potato as, like, token but, as tokens but also coloured as well yeah because you can okay. get different sort of coloured potatoes so I suppose you could probably well, dye them I guess yeah I don't know oh sautéed meeples with a side of uh Vegetable, <laughs> vegetable dice couscous. Uh, uh, oh God! <laughs> I just um, oh fuck! I can't. Ponder terror below. Yeah, <laughs> so bad, so bad. That's good one for the Christmas menu. Yeah, Yule log of love. Oh, yeah. so I thought of that one yeah. and decided against it. I figured and, reason and then went. <laughs> Yeah, Pom de Terra below is better. It's <laughs> still not good. Uh, right, come on. Go yeah, back in okay. the game. Uh, big topic. Right, which is this week. If you. Uh, no, that's the audience question. <laughs> <laughs> this format is ruined! Which of your hobbies do you think needs a new board game influenced adaption? Now, I would have thought one of the things would have been football. <laughs> Go on. Veggie City Oceana. Oh dear. Okay, like, so realistically, video games, there's no point because they're already. There's already, yeah. Diamond I'm doesn't. really sorry I wasn't listening again. <laughs> what are we talking about? Which of your hobbies do you think needs a new board game influenced adaption? Oh. So I would have thought probably for you, someone like you, you probably would have said football, but hey, we've got uh, None. Ingenious I, Sniper. You've got, you've no, got like Blood Bowl as well, and you've got None. Forge World Games. I, I don't want to see any crossover between my hobbies. Unless someone's willing to make me some power armor so I can do airsoft dress as a Chaos Space Marine. But I, no, I don't want to see any board games with my hobbies. I don't want, yeah. I, I, unless it can be done well. I don't want someone like half hashing something. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the, the suggestion here is it doesn't have to be a half hash. But it could be good. Yeah, yeah. It's just something where you have a hobby and there's not really something that connects you in board gaming. Like... I think it's LARP is probably the most appropriate, but it sort of fits into a tabletop RPG. Very RPG, point. isn't it? I would play a an Empire <laughs> tabletop RPG. An Empire. So Empire being the Has the that not that must have been made by someone. Someone I think started making one, but I don't know. If it's like a fan made thing. Hmm. Do you know something? I feel like there's there's room in board gaming for a game about preparing yourself for a LARP. Like right, putting your gear together and things you, like you that. You mean to go leaving to it all to the last minute and then posting on Facebook that you're not ready? Yes, because that's what happens. Yes, exactly. That is what lappers do. Or trying to avoid that and actually being properly prepared for once. Be properly prepared. And you get scored at. You the bring end, nothing you waterproof. Done. Yeah, and it pisses it down in the middle of June. Okay, <laughs> that, that is. This sounds like it. experience. I know. I, I always bring said. waterproof because I'm not a maniac. Okay. Contrary to what you said earlier at the start of the podcast. Different sort of maniac. <laughs> Prepared I'm, I'm, maniac. I'm the sort of maniac that plans his crimes, not the sort of maniac that just goes on killing sprees. But do you know... Ah, dependent on what, which, what I'm feeling each day. But you day. also <laughs> wear, you wear the appropriate clothing for the appropriate weather. Yeah, I try to. Yeah. But like, uh, you could quite easily have a system where, you say, you have a card or something that shows you what you need in order to make the sword that you need to get. So you have to start almost like venturing out to, to find ways to actually get the materials to be able to put it together but you've also you're also all against the clock mm -hmm. right yeah. towards that i don't feel like there's a game like that no. on the market 
it's a L unique LARP theme. prep the board game. Yeah, exactly. It sounds like it would be the worst board game ever, but I feel like it'd be expensive knowing LARP prep. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the problem is Your all of our... is broken. Oh god. Try and patch it with millions of different things. I feel like our hobbies are too our personal hobbies are quite too close to Root vegetables. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Sorry. with that style of like lettering yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah, I feel like the problem Sorry. is like you say, like I mean, video games are done. You quite like music, but then yeah. there's obviously there's probably a musical you know, board game. You know of sorts? your playlist. Yeah. Um, I started to make my staff listen to it. Nice. I, I showed them some of the songs. They requested the playlist. I came back ten minutes later and they said we had to turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> and they said we like some of the songs, but some of them are just unbearable. So I've made them a condensed playlist called Premium Hot Garbage, <laughs> <laughs> and it's all the best songs from your playlist, okay. which they listened to for twenty minutes and said this is still unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> the uh, original original playlist. The original original Night Team Shells playlist. Yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> That one. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't feel like there's many music based board games out there. I can't think of anything where it's like. I don't know, like a band one or something, like a band creator or like, I don't know. Yeah, like, you have to go on tour and stuff yeah. like that. And Actually, that'd be quite a cool concept. Like, you, you've genuinely got to try and make a band. I feel like that would be a really nice cooperative game. Yeah, because like, you're. One of you could play the manager. Well. If your manager gives you various different tasks and you've got various different routes you can go down, so it's almost like a choose your own adventure. Yeah, uh, we're making back to making a game again. We are, but we're kind of. But it would be a nice, it'd be a nice idea because then you could like, oh, you didn't get paid for this gig, or you started off at this rubbish place, or yeah. such and such as guitar broke. Yeah, you know. I mean, I, I will stress as well. I feel like the difference between the two sections here is we're actually coming up with ideas for it, not putting it for a random generator. No, no. So we don't necessarily have to worry about making the game here. We're just no. making suggestions of things we feel like but there's a gap in the market in. I just Which, don't by the way, see... if we're wrong, do comment on it down below and point us towards these games because we'd probably be quite interested in them. I, yeah, I just can't think of a, mu a musically based board game. No. No, I, I can't think of one. It goes back to this thing we talked about earlier with audio in board games. Hmm. Would that get annoying? Or would there be no audio? I don't mean the audio. The idea audio. is you're just sort of playing the artist. Hmm. Yeah. Like the, the, you roll, like, or whatever. You do the thing, and depending <laughs> on the cards or whatever it is, the choice for the night is how well your gig went. I like the idea that, hmm. that you can take different gigs. Uh, but there's a constantly fluctuating change in interest and genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you've got like, to try you can play current. like a Kiss. Um, tribute band, yeah. and you'd you'd play and you'd norm make you'd make more money at times where there's an increase in the interest in obscure makeup. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you kind of like do you balance bit. do you balance your band as well between like do you, speaking do you from Coldplay or like Maroon Five who pretty much do whatever's popular, or do you specifically go into one very specific genre and make tons of money when that's popular? Do you what? But struggle when it's not. This feels like. A game of life game. Oh, please don't. <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? Like, you, you make choices, and depending on your outcome, is how you. So you hit Based 60 like... or whatever, and that's retirement age, and then you look back and see how your band was successful. So, like you were saying, midway through, like on the game of life, you can change careers, can't you, and stuff like that, yeah. or whatever. So, it would be whether, like, you stick to your guns, rock and roll the whole time, or do you suddenly go poppy? I, five. Yeah. I kind of like the idea that at the beginning of the game, <clears throat> again, cooperatively around the table, you decide whether you want to be a band that's going to be artistically inclined or whether you're just going to follow trends and try to make as much money like as possible. Sellouts, basically. So in other words, at the beginning of the game, you almost <coughs> have to set yourself a goal. Like, do you want an easy game? Do you want a hard game? I, I wonder then... as well, you probably you could have it so that you get more... So that you get scored on the amount of money you make, the amount of popularity you have, and the amount of niche... Like, like critical mm, acclaim yeah. that you so get like from you, you could be sources. the most popular... Um, 
stereoscopic dolphin rock band yeah. that uses dolphin sounds as synth noises. Yeah. Because there's only one band doing that. Yeah. And like you could get critical acclaim for being that and you'd get special points for that. But you wouldn't make much money so you'd lose that points there. Or you'd be Maroon 5 and you could appeal to any 18 year old girl that listens to them now because they're popular again. I imagine and you're, you're be... kind of like you're focusing more on your band's image and stuff like that over mm. but necessarily releasing songs because if you have one of three goals you'd have to find a way in the game to be able to make every category relevant to everything mm. i like then... the idea that you so you your money your money mm-hmm. allows you to buy things necessarily that would either improve your band or mm-hmm. change your band's direction so like you say an image stylist or something like that or a social media influencer or something like that so you could basically you, your band could start off as a garage band and then when you get like about a grand or two you could invest in um like a makeover type thing yeah or like you know, like uh, uh, sort of adverts and stuff like that. So you can basically try and get yourself more popular through social medias. That can have a negative effect as well, depending on. So you can have a negative effect on maybe, like you say, like your core fans. Like maybe your fans at the end of it, they they change and you lose some of the core ones, mm. but you gain newer ones that are more fickle. Yeah. So like there could be always different like levels of you true again like choosing your adventure. I guess. Carcass yeah. gone. Carcass <laughs> gone. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No. I. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Genuinely threw me can't there, stop. Yeah. <laughs> I just like the idea that whatever you do has positive and negative effects. Yeah. So it's, it's almost like an RPG as well. Yeah. In a way that you're trying to tell the story of the Everybody Dice Band. Yeah. Okay. I I thought of another hobby which I don't think is very well represented in board games. Wrestling. The graps. You got the RPG, but yeah. You've got the RPG. You also have the Rumble Slam, the miniatures yeah, game. That was but I feel like in terms of a board game and stuff like that, it's not very well represented. I think it because... in a very similar way. Yeah, possibly. So the music one we're talking about. Mm. Yeah. Well, like, isn't a career for a wrestler? Unless you are just having matches mm. in it. It's not focused on a career. It's just focused on individual matches. Although the... You can have team bouts. It, it, honestly, the... Sumo Gnomes kind of comes into it a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> it does a little, yeah. Take yeah. it to Rice. Yeah, yeah okay. Right. <laughs> I, I, I can't actually stop thinking about it. They're getting worse as well, each one. It's I just thought Ticket to Rice was alright. I don't know. The carcass scone was good. That was, that was good. Yeah, I'll give you that carcass scone. Root scorn. vegetables is just root vegetables. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, um, have we run out of steam here? Well, I think we need to cut him off, at least. Okay. <laughs> if, you, if you don't stop me, this will go on forever. <laughs> so, okay. Um, if you would like to send <laughs> us an audience night, question, yeah. <laughs> if you would like to send us an audience question, you can do at mailbag at everybodydice.com. Uh, if you'd like to follow us on our social medias, you can do at Twitter at everybody dice and on Instagram at everybody dice show. I'm not going to plug the Patreon this week, I think because of our situation, but, uh, Hey, uh, if you do still fancy, <laughs> fancy it, then by all means you can do. I'm not going to push it too much. Chronicles of cream. Is that oh. just going to be like a bowl of cream? Yeah. <laughs> <Pretty much. laughs> Let's hope so. Or, or is it going to be cream in different stages of the dairy process? Oh, I like that. <laughs> it's chronicling it. Nice. Um, okay. Uh, other than that, I think it's just time to say goodbye. So, see you next time. Bye. 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 <laughs>